Beatrice? Uh, yeah, yeah. They know all about Natasha. And, you know, I told them that Sam was struggling. Uh, but what kid wouldn't, you know, losing a parent at such a young age? But being back in a familiar environment with kids his own age to play with, it's the best thing for him, Nick. I mean, kids are incredibly resilient, you know. Would you like me to pick him up? Uh, take him to the library or something? No, no, it's fine. Uh, Roy and Mary are going to play chess with him after school, so I might go there. I think that's a good idea. Oh, come on, Mum. On the list of danger sports, I think chess is right down the list. No, no, I, I mean fraternising with Roy and Mary. <laughs> you make it sound like they're going to go behind the bike sheds and smoke fags. You know, he's interested in chess. And right now, him being interested in anything is a minor miracle. Yeah, but he's already spending a lot of time with George. Yeah, and his classmates, and Hope, and I don't care who he's with. As long as they draw him out of himself and get him talking, OK? I've got to strangle Roy. He opened up with fools, mate. I just wanted to turn around and say, you're the fool, because now we're back at square one. No pun intended. Yeah, stay keen. You know, I haven't seen him this motivated since. You know, it's his first day back at school in ages, and I'm just worried he's becoming more and more of an outsider. Word of advice from the mother of a troubled son. <laughs> Wasn't that bad, was that? Not you. David. The power lies with the one who cares the least. Back off, Nick. You care far too much about everything right now. Getting Lily anyway, so do you mind if you could get Harry for two? They've just moved a meeting. Where's Adam? He's in court. Well, yes, I'll just add it to the long list of everything else I do for you. Thank you, Mum. Well, if there's anything I can do, I mean, I'm ready, willing, and able. Even the trip to Fresco seems quite fun at the moment. You're supposed to be taking it easy. Gail, yeah, sweetheart, I've got cataracts, not tuberculosis. Still. What book is it you're reading, Gran? Oh, I don't really know, because I've got cataracts. <laughs> books? I said I'd back Sam's new school books for him. I'll never have the time to do them on top of everything else. Well, do you know, maybe that's something I could be trusted with. Yes. I'll go out and buy him some snazzy paper. Come on, I'll let her do some it. Yes, please. Let me prove I am not totally devoid of function. Fine. You're welcome. <laughs> there we go. Oh, no, come on, stop it. Oh, no. Oh, let me do that. Oh, for heaven's sake, what is the matter with this plastic? Not again. Oh, <laughs> kids, come and help me with the shopping. Oh, it's only Lily here. Well, where was everybody else? Well, Adam picked up... Harry, ages ago, and Max isn't home yet. Well, David's not going to be too happy about that. Oh. Ma'am, what are you doing? Oh, it's this silly plastic. They make it so much stronger than it used to be. It's impossible to work with. Well, just leave the rest to me. Oh. Too late. Oh, ma'am. They're ruined. I've told you it's this plastic. Yes. I'm sure it's the plastic. Gail, that is my first drink. Come on. Hello, David. Where? I'll be at work by then, but you can always bring me over some lunch. All right, all right, keep your hair on. So what's the news? Oh, uh, they're just waiting for some painkillers, but Max is being discharged. Oh, well, David will be happy. Yeah, not enough to bring me a butty over, though. Look, I could do that. It's about time I had a role to play in this family. Even if that role is made out of bread. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> again. Look, if you want something to do, you can help me pair socks. Oh, is that what it's come to? My value in life, matching lefty with righty. I don't think I could face the excitement, to be honest. I'm sure Sarah probably just didn't say it in a good way yesterday. 
Well, she practically made out that you were accusing me of being an alcoholic. Well, your bags were clinking a good one. Maybe I'd have less time to drink if people started trusting me to do more than match in flaming socks. Do you know I'm beginning to feel totally obsolete? I'm an analog person in a digital age. Hey, uh, Audrey, what's, uh, what's analog? Oh, show me. Oh, you I'm going with him. No, because if someone spots you, they'll think you're wagging, won't they? Or if I'm with you, they'll know it's legit. Well, wouldn't you rather people think I was wagging it than excluded? You haven't been excluded. Well, I will be, won't I, after this meeting? Look, you're the victim in all this, Max. You've got to remember that. Hi. Hi. Where are you two going? I was taking him to precinct, you know, get him a new phone case before he smashes his screen. It's... Well, if you're going to the precinct, will you bring me back some tights? What? No! David, what? can you grab some milk on your way back? No! What is this? Look, come on, before it turns into a shop crawl. I'm not sure buying him a new phone case is sending out the right message. Oh, he's just trying to keep occupied. I'd be keeping my head down if I was Max. No, David's trying to keep occupied. He's really worried about what the school are going to say. And I've told him, you know, they can't chuck Max out now after what Daniel did. But he was in the flat. What, so we deserve to get kicked down the stairs? No, but he's not entirely innocent, that's all. I mean, we can't ignore that. Is there enough milk for a cuppa? Stay there a minute, Harry. Yeah, OK. OK, you can come in now. Darling, do you want to go and get that basketball that you found? Show it to Grandma? Yeah! Good boy. What are you doing? You're trying to freak him out. What, by being sensibly cautious? Mum, you've just come through a locked door and you've got the only spare key. What are you expecting? A stalker that can walk through walls? I don't know how you can be so relaxed about it. I'm not relaxed. I just don't want to be scared in my own locked flat. I don't want to give him that power. Oh! Mr. an anniversary. Oh, they're gorgeous. You know, honestly, don't say anything to Adam, but all this stuff with being frightened, it's just making him so romantic. <laughs> well, I'm glad you two are getting on again because uh, your marriage has had more rotten downs than your grand's had G&T's. <laughs> Voicemail. Hi, my darling. I just wanted to say thank you so much for the gorgeous flowers. Can you try not to be too late from work tonight? Because it'd be really nice to get a bit of us time before we go to Amy's do. All right, love you. Bye. Harry, how would you like a sleepover at your gran and Uncle David's tonight? Mum, I told you, don't worry. I'm not playing with Lily. She'll win. Well, she'll only win, my darling, because she's older than you. I was just thinking about your us time with Adam. Oh. Yes. Hmm? Apology accepted. Sorry. Yeah, thank you. Are you ready, love? Yep. Yeah. Anything exciting happening at school today? No. Well, you're not very talkative. Not like you at all. I have a lot on mind. Oh, anything you'd like to talk to Granny Gale about? Dad won't let me play chess anymore. Ah, yes, I'd heard. The school called. I promised her I'd work hard. Don't see why he's being so mean. Uh, your dad just worries you're getting obsessed, love. Wasn't he obsessed with something when he was my age? Um, stickers. Used to love collecting stickers. Stickers? And pop groups. And what were they called? Uh, new Boys on the Block. He used to practice all their dance routines. I bet you didn't stop him doing that. No, no, I didn't. So, will you talk to him for me about chess? I'll see what I can do. School OK? He did. How was he? He was in a right grump. Sorry about that. Are you sure about stopping the chess? <sighs> no. It's getting too much. You know, it's affecting his schoolwork. Couldn't you just limit it a bit? Well, look, I haven't said this to Leanne, but I, I think he's using it to block things out. He's not quite dealing with his grief. 
What makes you think that? Well, he's not talking about Natasha at all. I mean, all he wants to talk about is chess. Is that such a bad thing? He's ten years old. He's probably not ready to talk about it yet. Maybe a distraction is just what he needs. I worry it's more than a distraction. It's like Leanne, you know, locking herself away, not wanting to talk about Oliver. He's doing the same with chess. It's like a lock on the door. Why didn't you tell me? The us? office. Uh, Leanne will pick him up about eight ish. Yeah, fine. Is he excited about Space Camp? Uh, well, no. I mean, he's refusing to go. I'm not refusing to go. I'll go. I was just telling you I'm not enjoying it very much. Oh, that's 300 quid well spent, isn't it? Why don't you like space anymore? I mean, what's wrong with space? That's what I said. It's just, I like other things now. Chess. Oh, <laughs> you noticed. But I'm not allowed to play chess. Um, let's go and get you some tea, eh? Where's your coat? Oh, here. Oh. What's this? Nothing. It's my record of games. You keep a note of your moves so you can read and work out where you went wrong. You wouldn't understand. <laughs> I think, Rand, I do understand. I've watched The Queen's Gambit. Have you? Well, yeah. I was worried about you and look what happened to her in the end. I thought she turned out okay. Well, how come you watched it? I don't think it's PG. I've read the book. He's read the book? Of course he's read the book. It's about chess. Don't. Well, this game's dated yesterday, and this game's dated the day before, and at the top of one of the columns is an R, which must mean Roy. Have you been playing chess by my back? Well, I'm not saying it's nothing hard. Oh, hey, uh, what's that? Yes, sir, I'll get his stuff. Hey, Sam, have a quick word. Look, um, I was wrong to stop you playing chess. I can see how much you get out of it. Really? Yeah. I don't want it to take over your life, and you still got to do your homework. But you got my full support from now on. Roy thinks you're ready for a tournament tomorrow. That's amazing. Yeah, it is, isn't it? I mean, we could have a game now, a little practice, before we go to it. Look, it's great you're supporting me, but I prefer it if Roy took me. No offence. Right, yeah. None taken. I've gone out of rubber gloves now. To these gauntlets. You give it a rest. You're getting on my nerves now. It says on the infomercial that they've been double dipped for durability. Mum, will you stop? You're going to give yourself another coronary? Yes, well, if I could find a rubber tabard, I'd have one of those as well. There's a shop in Northern Quarter that sells gear like that. I'll get you one for Christmas. I've got to do something to distract myself. My own grandson dragged off to the police station. I didn't sleep a wink. Yeah, you and me both. I can't believe he spiked Amy Barlow's drink. You've been far too soft on him. That's what this is all about. Well, yeah, all right, I'll admit it. I, I don't know what to do or say with him anymore. I'm out of my depth. Give me a good shirt. What? I'll run the iron over it. I mean, the judge just might go easier on him if you both turn up looking smart. Oh. <laughs> and don't you give me that face. All right. Max might be the one in the dock, but all eyes will be on you, because everyone always blames the parents. And I should know. It says here you can go. How is he? Well, he's talking, so that's something. Well, I hope you gave him both barrels. He knows he messed up, if that's what you mean. No, um, it's not, actually. I mean, all this... Pussyfooting around isn't doing a blind bit of good. Mum, I'm just trying to give him a bit of TLC, all right? I mean, the poor lad's terrified he's going to prison. Well, he's got you right around his little finger. I'm just trying to give him a little bit of love and understanding, OK? Well, I'm sorry, David, but you need to come down on him hard and heavy. I mean, it's the only way you're ever going to get a handle on his behaviour. What should we do? 
Hitting round Ed with a cricket bat while we're at it. Oh, shut up, David. Could I just remind you that I have some experience bringing up a tearaway teenager? Yeah, and newsflash, Mum. You did a terrible job. Look, I did what you said, all right? I, I came down hard on him yesterday like a ton of bricks, and look what happened. He tried to run away. Oh, that's it. You think it's your fault that Max is in hospital? <laughs> Well, it's not, love. Well, it is, Mum, isn't it? Of course it is. Look, he's my son, and I've absolutely no idea how to deal with him anymore. And I've given him chance after chance. I've, I've, I've tried the old carrot and stick thing, and what if, at the end of the day, I'm just a terrible parent? Uh. Oh, how was Max? Can you tell me? School called us to go in before we had a chance to visit. What for? Oh, you know, so they can check how he's doing, wish him a speedy recovery, and then they drop us with... Yeah, you believe that? What am I saying? Of course you can. He had enough chances, didn't he? Does he know? <laughs> no, not yet. He's stressed enough already with this court case coming up, but when he finds out about this... I don't know how it all went so wrong. He was such a sweet little boy. I'm sure we can sort something out. Maybe they'll let him transfer to another school. Oh, yeah? Young offenders? No, a normal school, not a pupil referral. But won't that be miles away? Yeah, exactly. And anyway, we can forget about his GCSEs. Only thing he's going to get is a criminal record. Well, look. Ah, oh, don't you look lovely? Good day for this new school. Yeah, Ma, I've done the pet talk. Several times. Here you go. Oh, what's this? It's something for your new school. Hey, they're all the rage. All the cool kids are wearing them. I saw an article about them online. Check you out. Reading reviews. Oh, thank you, Gran. It's lovely. Yeah, super fresh. Come on, let's go. Yeah. Good luck, love. We're all very proud of you. Proud of me for what? Getting kicked out of normal school. This is a normal school. Hmm, yeah, if you're a freak or a weirdo. Well, that's a positive attitude. Well, it'll be better than whether you're high, anyway. Yeah, just, just do your best, love. That's all anybody can ask of you. Come on. Do you need anything else? Uh, yeah. Just to sit this in the boot of your car. I mean, I turn up to school with this and I'll my head flushed down the bog by lunchtime. <laughs> It draws out all your toxins. How does it do that? No idea. All I know is that my skin has been begging for a good going over for months. Tim! Really dragging his feet this morning. Have you seen my phone, Chad? I don't want to start Suma for the journey anymore. Sounds like a lovely treat, this hotel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you haven't seen the Porsche, have you, girl? Uh, no, no, it is a bit late today. It's just that I've ordered something for our cell. I wanted to give it to her tonight. Oh. You, you couldn't take it in for us, could you? And give us a shout when he gets here. Yeah, of course I can. I, I was going to clean the windows anyway, so I won't miss him. Okay, drop me a text, yeah? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, in you get. Off we go, finally. So this your lifesaver. Well, it's like a military operation. Well, it would be if soldiers wore toweling dressing gowns and fluffy slippers. Yeah. He must be really eager to give Sally a present. Something special, is it? Yeah, it is. I can't stop. I've got to get back. Yeah. Sally really enjoys whatever it is you're giving her. Yep, me and all. Oh, he's fine. He's over there now, supping a beer and watching the telly. Look, Sal, I know you're disappointed about the spa, but Tim couldn't help it if he had a funny turn. Oh, I'm not bothered about the spa. And it wasn't a funny turn. I thought he said it was his heart. It was completely self-inflicted. That's what got my goat. Had he been drinking? No, it wasn't the drink. He'd only had a couple of glasses of champagne. Well, did he overdo it on an exercise bike or something? I don't understand. Oh, I can't say, but he sabotaged the whole thing. Look, Sal, I don't know what's gone on, but I do know that Tim was as excited about this getaway as you were. He got you a present, and he asked me to stay in for the postman. And then he drove all the way back here in his dressing gown to get it. Today? Yes, lunchtime. And if that doesn't show enthusiasm, I don't know what does. Oh, this stupid, stupid 
man. It wasn't a present for me he was waiting for. We wanted it to be a special night, so we bought some pills. Ecstasy? No, of course not. Ecstasy? Who do you think we are? The Happy Mondays? Pills for men. For downstairs. What's this been going on? Or not going on? Yonks. Ever since his heart operation. I see. I mean, we had to give it a few weeks, you know, till we got the all clear from the doctor. And then we got dead excited because we got the green light and then nothing. We tried everything. Massage, dirty talk. Dirty talk? Well, not filth, you know, just sexy chat, try and get things going. Right. And we ran a gamut of role play, you know. Naughty nurse and estate agent and... That well, lucky burglar. Sounds like a full-time job. Oh, I want mine, but nothing happened. It was like it had gone into hibernation. Well, I do know that a lot of experienced it. Me? How would that work? Well, no, I mean, any of your husbands, you know, in the past, have you ever had to try and get them going? Well, not Brian or Martin. Slowing them down was the problem. Well, they were young, I suppose. Joe was a bit hit and miss, but I put that down to the antidepressants. But Richard had a lot of trouble. He used to get very frustrated. I mean, I did wonder if that was the root of all his problems. Oh, thanks, girl. And there's me thinking the only thing I had to worry about was Tim's heart, and now you're suggesting that he might go round murdering the neighbours. No, I, I just think that a lot of men reach middle age, you know, their youth behind them, and their hair starts to fall out, and then the beer belly starts, and then the bits won't do what they want them to do, and... Well, I mean, if it is a medical problem... Oh, male pride is the problem, because he refuses to speak to anybody. Whereas us women, you know, we have periods and then pregnancy, and before you know it, we're in the menopause, being poked about by medical staff. It's like meat and potatoes to us. But he said he'd been to see Dr Gaddas, and that was a lie too. A lot of men are reluctant to go to the doctor. I saw that in my years at the medical centre. Well, I know that. But the worst thing of all is, he's blaming the whole thing on me. You? Yeah, he was so mad at me earlier. He said I was pressurising him. He practically called me a sexual predator. I was just trying to be sexy, you know, give him a nudge, help him along. Sally, you just need to talk to him. That's all we do, that's the problem. Do you think it'll help me to talk? It's a lovely bench, isn't it? It is. It's just a crying shame at even us to be here. Try five years on Sunday. Mm, I know. Could have been any one of us, couldn't it? Any one of us from the street. Our kids. Grandkids. They went out for a concert. And they never came back. Oh, Lily loves Ariana Grande. Oh, don't, Gail. It doesn't bear thinking about. Of course, two being civil with each other. Yeah, well. Some things are bigger than you and me, Eileen. Sarah, actually, see if she wanted any shopping. Oh, um, come on for you. I just wanted to say thank you for the advice that you gave me yesterday. Well, I don't like to dish it out. But... Oh, no, 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 you're very wise, Gail. Well, I like to think I am, but uh, don't you dare ask my kids to confirm that. Offsprings, what do they know? Tim's apologised. 
And we're determined to work through our problems together. Oh, Sal, I'm so pleased. I have been concerned, truth to tell. Oh, no, there's no need to stress now, but you will keep Tim's issues to yourself, won't you? What? His impotence? <sighs> Sorry. Down, his girl. impotence? Sorry. Because I'd hate to imagine how he'd be if this ever got out. Sally, I would never betray a confidence. Because I love him, you know, and I want to help him overcome his... his impotence. Uh -huh. mm. Have you thought about organising a racy surprise for him? I don't think the sight of me in a PVC nurse's outfit is going to do it. How about organising something to take his mind off everything? Like what? Um, I've got it. Did you make all your misses? Yes, Timothy. So how was the hotel? Yeah, it was all right, yeah. Did you get them little chocolates on your pillow? Yeah, but all right, the shop when I saw. I thought it were two tiny little dog jobbies. So it was just sexy time for the sandy. Yeah, it was... A, a gentleman never says, does he, Timothy? Well, I'm just honoured that you think I'm a gentleman. I also took a lot of rubbish. Hey, what's with the phone, man? This guy's worse than my kids. Yeah, it's my new app. Yeah, guess what this is? That is the view from my doorbell camera. That's exciting. Ooh, look, there's that... Is that Gail? Can she hear us? Yeah, <laughs> press this, and Hey, Gail! Oi, Gail! Do moody, Gail! Right then, you could eat your dinner off that fruit machine, huh, my little... Have I bumped into you? Oh, sorry, Gail, I've got to get back to Sal. Yes, you do. Hiding in the pub doesn't solve anything. Sorry? I heard about you to do with Ronnie. Oh, yeah, 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 that was just... cross wires, it's all sorted now. Is it? Really? Yeah. Oh, well, I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm very glad that you're talking about it now, I mean... That's half the battle. And a lot of chaps are just too embarrassed to face up to it. Think it makes them less of a man somehow. Is that right? Well, yes, I mean, it's all nonsense, of course, because it's, it's very common. And there's help out there if you know where to look for it. And there's um, a lot of very good leaflets available for people in your situation. When I worked at the medical centre on reception, I used to read them in my dinner hour. Quite eye-opening they were. So I guess you heard about my situation from Sally, didn't you? Well, yes, but don't worry about it. She swore me to secrecy. But she's worried sick about you, so get home and talk to her. Because talking is how you'll get through this. Well, don't worry, I'll be talking to her all right. I'm pulling my weight, as you so kindly tried to remind me. I just asked you to do a bit of washing up. Oh, so taking the bins out isn't enough, right? Oh, Ma'am, let's not start sniping. I know you're worried about this afternoon. I'm not worried. They say it's a perfectly straightforward procedure. I might go blind if it goes wrong. <laughs> Ma'am, they do cataract operations every day. It's not going to go wrong. Well, let's hope not. Anyway... It's not just the fear of losing my sight. It's the fear of having to stay here much longer. Look, I know you want to go home, and I understand, but you've got to stay here while you're recovering. And the ophthalmologist said it could take quite a bit of time. Well, he's not the one sharing your bed, is he? Huh? <laughs> here she is, Captain Hook. Captain Hook? Yeah, is that who I mean? Who was the one with one eye? Are you thinking of Long John Silver? No, he had a wooden leg, for goodness sake. Hang on, well, who had one eye, then? Uh, well, I'm sure it was Long John Silver. Maybe he had one leg and one eye. Poor beggar. <sighs> Fascinating as this conversation is, could somebody please fetch me a drink? Yeah, in a sec, ma'am. Hang on, it, it all went well, then? Well, no, it was fine. Ah, uh, it only took 30 minutes. Can you believe that? I was really impressed, to be honest. Yes, you've just got to remember to put your drops in 
and rest. Yes, yes, yes. And is that drink on the way, please? I'll set the kettle on. No, I think I'm going to need something a bit stronger than that, my love. Ma'am, is that wise? Gail, love, the man said absolutely nothing about not drinking. All right, what will it be, my hearty? A tot of rum? No, <laughs> no not rum, love, no. A very large glass of Sauvignon, please, darling. Coming up, Captain. Oh, lovely. Oh, dear. Let's see what it's like. There was only one glass gone. She's had a traumatic day, bless her. Yes, but it's not just today, is it? She's putting it away at a rate of knots. You saw all the empties in the bin. You're hardly teetotal yourself. I have two glasses a night. Three if it's been a bad day. Which, to be fair, is quite often living with David and Max. Yeah. <sighs> if you're that worried about it, maybe you should talk to her. Oh, I've dropped hints, but she just bats them back like I'm a boring old nag. I think it's better to remove temptation. You're not going to get rid of all of it, are you? Well, my echoes in my wardrobe for safekeeping. I'm not trying to justify Practice. my uh, She got interrupted. It's Greg Tinker, this is. Yeah, spilling his vodka and black currant all over shop. Hmm. Good job he wasn't on duty. So, tell me this. Did Leanne apologise? To Adam? I mean, why should she? So we don't get sued. Oh, oh hello, ladies. Oh, here we go. Two for the price of one. Super Gran and her X-ray vision. <laughs> I did tell you we were coming. So, are we post-op, Audrey? Well, just the one eye to begin with, and it's great. It's just like having someone clean your windshield. <laughs> <laughs> well, park your derrieres and I'll bring the wine list over. Um, it's a bit early for that. Well, seeing as we're both retired and we're not exactly doing anything in the day, come on. It's lunchtime, ma'am, and you're still recovering. We'll have two lime and sodas, please, Debbie. Oh, excuse me a sec. Oh, it's mop and roll. Yes, uh, thank you for getting back to me. Now, I'm asking for a big favour. Uh, so, I need you what's the latest on toy? Yes. Lovely reviews you've got. Some of a pizza in, spilling the beans. Well, I don't see how she could have meant it. No, well, that's what I mean. Well, this little baby I feel sorry for. Oh, girl, it's all so tragic. And he was such a nice young man. Well, so we thought. Mm. None of them can resist it in the end, can they? I uh, take it Abby wasn't wearing those awful overalls when she caught his eye. It's Kevin I feel sorry for. It's all so public, isn't it? Well, what goes around comes around, sweetheart. I mean, he was messing about with that Molly Dobbs, right? And look how she ended up. She knows that cupboard like the back of her hand. Isn't she a bit too old to be bending and stretching? Should be cheap. She was a monster. I don't see the year in the heart of Derbyshire. Deja vu. Oh, you're back. Uh, where did you get that from? She must have bought it. Well, that's funny because I've just seen Dev and he said that you bought a bottle of wine from him this afternoon. Well, why would he say that? Is she making you buy wine? No, I, I'm serious. I'd like to know what happened. You walked in and said, hi, Dev, and then he started listing off all the members of this family that bought what off him. Well, I can see I've touched a nerve. <sighs> She's 80-odd. You can't be monitoring her. Oh, that's exactly the time you've got to start monitoring them. I mean, they get to 80 and they throw caution to the wind. So they should. I have been slogging my guts out for minimum wage. Well, you didn't need to say yeah. Well, I couldn't just leave him in the lurch. Let Leanne pick up a sweeping brush. Look at her. She's comatose. Oh, give it a rest, woman. I beg your pardon. She's had a drink. Do you blame her? Is that implied criticism? Just let her sleep it off. It gives us a bit of peace and quiet. You could say congratulations. Congratulations. So what were you doing, mopping round people's feet while they were trying to eat? Well, it's kitchens and toilets, mainly. I mean, the last girl abandoned ship. Well, let's hope this girl's up to snuff. Ooh. I'm feeling it now. Don't 
She was fine on her own. So you just left her there? No, I did try and insist on going in with her, but she was all, I'm not an invalid, so be a sweetheart and get gone. Yeah. Thanks. I really am sorry. It's OK. It's not your fault. Is it not? No, it's the elephant. Sorry? What? Oh. The elephant? It's cursed. Yeah. You think about all the bad things that have happened to us since you brought this home. It's got a bad juju. What's juju? It's energy. It's got a bad energy about it. I'm getting rid. You are not. What? Hang on. Bernie said... Uh, what's Bernie got to do with it? Well, she's the one that figured it all out. Yeah, she said as long as we've got that elephant in the house, our family are going to continue to have bad luck. She shouldn't have been in the house in the first place. Bernie Winters' middle name is Scammer. Is it? You shouldn't be trusting a word that comes out of her mouth. She probably knows that this is valuable and she wants to get her hands on it. Do you really think so? Yeah, well, I'll take it to be valued after my shift. This family could do with a nice windfall. Yeah. I'll see you at home. The, uh... That was an epic waste of time. Oh, so it's not worth a fortune, then? Fiver at the most, you said. You should have taken it and left it there. <laughs> it's not cursed, you daft beggar. How do you know? Because bad things have been happening to this family long before I bought that. You, you think something else that's cursed? Where's my mum? She's not back yet. I thought you were going to accompany her home. I didn't know I was supposed to. Well, I thought it should go without saying. I better call the hospital, see if she's still there. Oh, you're here. Oh, well spotted. Nothing wrong with your eyesight, eh? How did it go? Is it OK? Yeah, OK, love, thank you. And how did you get home? Well, seeing that none of my nearest and dearest could be bothered to pick me up, I got a taxi. You said you were fine getting back on your own. Oh, and it's still outside, so, Gail, love, could you, uh, could you go and pay? Me? Well, I think that's the least you can do, love, as you abandoned me like that, don't you? Go on, the meter's running. I thought... Um... Oh, um... Well, I'm still feeling really cold, actually, Shona. I mean, being outside all that time on my own, waiting for the taxi. Clearly all my fault, as always. Oh. And what did the ophthalmologist say? Well, that i got to keep doing the eye drops and rest and, actually, not stand around in the freezing cold. <laughs> and where are you going now? I'm going to nip to the pub to have a quick drink, just to warm me up after the day I've been through. Oh, no, you're not. Rest means sitting there, not boozing it up over the road. I'm not going to be boozing it up anywhere, Gail, honestly. Ma'am, you've just had surgery. Oh, have I? Oh, I've forgotten. Why don't I get Shona to take me over there and she can hold my hand? Are you inviting me to the pub, Audrey? Because that sounds absolutely lovely. I've had a very, very stressful week off. Come on, last one there buys the first drink. Oh! <laughs> Thanks for that. I hate messing with the pedal thing. I don't wish people would know the film. Well, it's not full enough, in my opinion. Definitely room for one more item. I am not getting rid of that sculpture because of Bernie Winter's nonsense. It is not a sculpture. A sweatshop in China knocks out thousands every day. It came from Thailand, as you very well know, and it cost me 500 baht. Yeah, rhymes with tap. Sounds about right. Honestly, it's definitely cursed. Look at what happened to Audrey. Don't you think evil spirits have got better things to do with the time than mess with me man's lift? I mean, that ornament contains an accumulation of bad karma. That's an accumulation of mumbo-jumbo. Jumbo, mumbo-jumbo. Jumbo. The elephant stays. Well, fine, but if anything else happens to Audrey on your head, be it. Just hope she listens to that ophthalmologist and takes it easy. Her 
you're not back at Roy's till tomorrow, are you? No. Can you look after me mum while I'm at work? Again? Oh, come on. Audrey's not a toddler. She can look after herself. Really put my mind at rest. OK, fine. Or babysitter. On one condition. So that's that, then. <laughs> Leave this travelled halfway round the world to end up like this. Just think of it as starting a new adventure. What, Weatherfield landfill? I wish I'd left it where it was. Yeah, you and me both. It's been the elephant in the room long enough, and if you want me looking after Audrey, it's going to be the elephant in the bin. Uh, whoa, 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 you can't do that. You see, someone recognises craftsmanship when they see it. Do you want to? That? No, no, thank you. Well, no, you can put it in the shop. I mean, it's much nicer than that horrible weasel. No, I'm not having that thing send the barbers down the tube. We're getting rid. Well, not in there, you know. It needs proper recycling, that. Well, it's not glass or plastic. It's brass, Shona. There's a separate container at the tip for metal. Well, I've not got time for that now. No, I just have to go back in there. Uh, over my dead body. Look, I'm late for work as it is. Look, if you're so worried about it, you dispose of Oh, no, 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 hang on a minute. I don't I hope you two will be very happy together. Although I wouldn't bet on it. Yeah, but I don't want it. <laughs> you all right? Yes. No thanks to Dev. 85 pence for a tin of baked beans. That's about a penny a bean. And you need to take out a mortgage for his chicken thighs. My mum OK for you? Yeah, yeah, she was fine. Was fine. Has something happened? No. So, where is she? I don't know. I thought you were keeping an eye on her. Well, I did, but I had to nip into Lily's school. I can't believe you abandoned her. Have you learnt nothing since yesterday? Gail, stop getting your knickers in a twist. You'll cut off your circulation. Audrey's a grown woman. I'm sure she won't have gone far. Oh, I'm sure she won't. She doesn't have to. I'm, uh... Do you know, with what he's eating and what he's drinking. Oh, you could learn a thing or two. Oh, here we go. <laughs> you know, I think you missed your vacation, Gail. You should have been a lecturer, right? She does nothing but. I mean, she's got a PhD in other people's business. You should be at home convalescing. Yes, and she's the world's worst DJ. She never changes the record. <laughs> you need to rest, ma'am. Yes, you need to rest your gums, lady. Oh, anyway. You are not having another drink. So what are you now? Constable of the fun police, eh? Come on. Give me the bottle. Be Give me the bottle it's bought and paid for. You two, cut it out. Your eyesight's bad enough without you seeing double. Ladies, ladies, please, you're better than this. You were the mayoress of Weatherfield, Audrey. Oh, look what you've done. <laughs> oh, well, the drinks are on you, Gail. <laughs> did that on purpose. Oh, Gail, get over yourself. Do you think I'd waste half a bottle of Merlot on that thing? That thing happens to be cashmere. Well, 10% cashmere. Oh, hello, fancy pants, cashmere. Ooh. Now you're just being childish. Yes, well, if I am, it's because you always treat me like a child. So if you don't mind now, I want to be by myself. Unless it's my bedtime. You can be impossible. Do you know that? What are you going to do about it? Stop my pocket money. Oh, I suppose that was you making a spectacle of yourself in the street earlier? Yes, it was, actually. Um, Daisy gave me a tequila slammer. Did she know? <laughs> it's supposed to put uh, nitro, what's it, in your afterburner. Oh. So I heard. Well, I shall be having words with that little madam. Well, before you do, I will have words with you. Oh, really? What about? How you ruined my new cashmere jumper? Uh, 10% cashmere, sweet, I don't think. Anyway, no, 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 something far more important. Oh, <laughs> well, do reveal all. Well, I've made a decision, right? And in a few days' time, I'm going to go home to Grasmere Drive. What? Mum, you can't. You're not ready. Oh. 
Gail, this is all part of the problem. Everybody thinking they're knowing my business better than me. Well, I've got news for you, daughter dear. There is only one Audrey Roberts around here and she's taking back control, right? I am the boss of her, not you. So stick that up, you cashmere jumper or whatever. Really? Yeah. Oh. How many different ways do you want me to say it? She was hammered, leathered, sozzled. Splattered. I mean, are you surprised, Mum? You've seen what she's been like last few months. Yeah, of course I have, yes, but not at work. Yeah, well, she hasn't been working. Now, shit, this is all new. I don't know how you could leave her there in that state, especially if she'd had a fall. What would you want me to do? Put a sack over her head and bundle her in a boot at car? You see me, Gran? Yeah, briefly. She just sat me. What? That's what I've been saying, Mum. She completely lost it. What's she playing at? She's pie eyed. She's bladdered how many more times? I've just had to cancel all my appointments. Mr. Clark wasn't happy. He's got his retirement due in an hour. Said he's gonna have to wear a hat now. Never mind that. What about me mam's head? Oof, well, she'll feel it in the morning. I meant from falling over. Yeah, over your repulsive ornament, little elephant. Maybe it is cursed. She's not cursed, Mum. She's just flaming pie-eyed, that's it. Yeah, no, she did seem fine. I think she's just really drunk. I could do without all this, though, especially with everything else I've got going on. And Gail, I love Audrey like a mother. You know I do, but she needs sorting out. Mr. Just holding your hand. Can I come in? Ah, it's a free country. Well, at least you can't sack me. Mm -hmm. St. David, aren't you? And Maria. Oh, goodness. Thought you might need a bit of company. Does it come with a lecture? No. But I could murder a copper if you've got one. Not I just hate being treated like a child. I understand. Do you, though? Really? You know, when I was married to Alf or Councillor Roberts, I was respected. Oh, I know everybody laughed at me behind my back, saying, oh, she's no better than she should be, that one. But at least I felt I was in control of my life. Do you know what I mean? Of course I do. And any laughing was always done with affection. The most part. Yeah, for the most part. I don't know. Where have all the years gone, sweetheart? Same place mine have gone, ma'am. Same place everybody's go. Into the sweet bye-bye. We're just worried about you, that's all. I mean, you've had such a lot to cope with, and you've been in the wars health-wise recently. Well, getting old doesn't come alone, I'll tell you that for nothing. And it's certainly not for wimps. <laughs> but sacking David and Maria. <laughs> oh, well, I'll sort it out in the morning. I mean, being family, they know what to expect. Oh, I think that poor child, Kelly, she must have wondered what it is. <laughs> Well, she'll learn soon enough. Oh, don't. Oh. Friends? Yes, of course. Why don't we celebrate with a little glass of wine? No, because I think I've got half a bottle left anywhere. Ma'am, you've been drinking most of the day. You see, there you go again. I'm sorry, telling me what to do. Well, what am I supposed to say when you're drinking yourself to death? Don't exaggerate. You crashed the car. You nearly broke your neck falling over my ornament. I mean, you've got more bruises than a stump man, and that's if your liver doesn't pack him first. Oh, and wouldn't you all love that, eh? What's that supposed to mean? Oh, Gail, don't play the innocence with me. You and your kids 
Can't wait to pounce like vultures and divvy up all my money. That's the most hurtful thing you've ever said to me. Well, stick around, because there's plenty more where that came from. You are coming home with me now. You're going to sleep off the booze and we'll talk about it in the morning. I am not coming back to number eight, so stuff that. I'm going to lock up and then I'm going to go to Grasmere Drive. So don't you worry. I shall phone and get a taxi. Ma'am, I wouldn't be able to sleep for worry. Well, have a glass of wine. That's what does it for me. Oh, please. Gail, would you just go, love? Please go. I've just had enough of you pecking my head. I really Ma'am, I... Go, Gail, please. I've had such a belly full today. Hello. She's actually sacked me. Well, it'll just be the drink talking. Well, you figured that out, have you? It's what's making a drink we need to deal with. Well, can't exactly see her in some support group, can you? You know, uh, Adam does know quite a lot about this, you know, because of Peter. Oh, that's right, yeah. Can you have a word with him? Is she just going to stay at Grasmere Drive full time? I don't know. I mean, I worry about her being there on her own. Oh, it might not be a bad thing. I mean, she can sleep it off tonight and then it just gives her a couple of days to think about everything. What if she has another fall? Yeah, but she can fall anywhere. You can't think like that. You can't watch her 24-7. We're just going to have to make sure that we keep checking on her. Yeah, but you'll have a word with Peter or her. Yeah? And, you know, maybe we could do a bit of research, you know, have a little look on the internet about, you know, older people and drinking. Good idea. Oh, you could do that. Why me? Well, you'll have loads of time on your hands now you're out of a job. <laughs> Did you take the bins out last night? Yeah. But they're still in the garden? Yeah. So... Did you bring them back in again? Yeah. But I've just checked and they're still full. Yeah. So why did you bring them in? Because the bin men are still on strike. Told me that in the first place. Yeah. David! What? Will you stop being so difficult? <sighs> I'm not. What's got stuck in your you, Ben? Well, I don't know, David. Maybe it's the fact that your grand spent the night in hospital. She'll be fine. Oh, will she? Well, I wouldn't know because my own mother's not speaking to me. Well, I should be so lucky. David, will you take this seriously? I, I am. A pride's just been hurt. That's all. She'll be OK. Max, come on. Do you think so? Yeah. I mean, how would you feel if all the street knew that you'd spent the night cradling a motorbike? Just let her come out and get over the embarrassment and then you two will go back to discussing your little power walking activities or whatever it is you two talk about. Right, are you ready? Yep. Right, good, cos I'm coming in with you. What? All right. I've got a meeting with you ready here. I'm going to talk about sorting them lads out. What? No, no, please don't do that. It's just going to make things worse. So you're just going to let them get away with it? Well, they've still got that photo of me, so, yeah, please. All right, fine. We'll leave it for now. But if anything changes, you let me know, all right, and I'll go in. I'm not having this blowing up in our faces again. Come on. I am just trying to clean the house a bit. Yeah, that tab is not as bad as you made out. <laughs> How's Mum? I've not been to see her yet, but the hospital said she had a good night. Good. Yes, I'm sorry she kicked off like that. Not your fault she uses me as a punch bag? Well, I still feel guilty. I know how much you do for her, despite what I said yesterday. Thank you. I just don't know how to show her that I'm not the enemy. Well, let me deal with that. Well, this is nice, feels oh, like. How lovely. Oh, so you bought a friend. Is that really what you want to say? No, I'd say much worse, but I don't want to offend the lovely nurses with my terrible language. I shouldn't have come. Oh, finally. You get something right. Enough. I mean, I love you, but I didn't fly all the way to Weatherfield to referee a boxing match. 
Now, either you find a way through this, or I'm going straight back to the airport. No, you've only just arrived. I don't care. Well, you spent a fortune on plane tickets for nothing. Come on. Money doesn't matter. The family does. Look, I've got some business to take care of, but when I get back here, I want things patched up. Okay? I don't know why I bother. But neither do I. Um, would you pass me the grapes on your way out? I may be a little overbearing at times. Overbearing? You give that Mussolini a run for his money, actually. It's only because I care. Oh, pull the other one, girl, please. Are you really going to let this ruin everything between us? <sighs> Gail? Please, would you pass the grapes? Oh, you can't I suppose that answers that. But whatever you think of me, ma'am, I do still love you. Oh, God. Gail? Yeah? Grapes. No, stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it. Of course I love you, you silly apeth. But you must stop treating like one of your children. I'm far less wayward. And I will and must cut down on the drinking, right? Well, right. That might not be a bad idea. Yes, well, thank you. I do appreciate everything you do for me, darling. But I really don't need looking after like some forlorn old donkey. Donkey? <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> I just care, ma'am. I know you do, love. But I am not giving in easily, right? I'm very pleased to hear it. Come on, let's put this awful sad saga behind us, yeah? Grape? <sighs> yes! <laughs> Please. Ah, what's this then? Oh, hi, sweetheart. Things all sorted? I think so. Gail and I have been organising some trips out when I get out of here. And uh, the first one is afternoon tea. And the spa? Yes. Who are you two and what have you done with my mother and sister? <laughs> Very funny. <laughs> it's a shame you won't be able to come with us on our little trips, my darling. Why not? Well, you'll be back home, won't you? Well... I've actually decided to stay a little while longer. At least until you're back on your feet. Oh, that's fantastic. Oh, that is the best news I've heard ever. So, can I get in on that afternoon tea action? Absolutely. Posh moisturizer and her Chanel number five. For the ride home? Yeah, it would just give her a boost. It's a, it's a woman thing. I've never had much luck with them. Oh, I changed her bed and I stuck some blooms in a vase. Well, that's very thoughtful of you and it, it'll save me having to go around. Good. Let's face it, I've been missing an action for years. Yes, well, you're here now. And my man is so much better for having you around. You know, she needs things in her diary. Outings to look forward to. Agreed. And I'll join you as and when, but uh, my hours are working at the bistro are... Pretty inflexible. Mm. Ask Nick for the time off. Not just his decision. I'd have to ask Debbie Webster and find her pretty intimidating. I wouldn't want to be on the wrong side of her myself. All me mam needs is a bit of company. You know, the older she gets, the luckier we are to still have her. Yeah. I just hope uh, my three feel the same way about me one day. For you, it was so tidy at Grasmere Drive. You've kept it so well. Thank you. Pleasure. Why don't you install yourself on the sofa and I'll stick the kettle on? Oh, the tea in the hospital, honestly. Oh. Why don't we go down to the Rovers later? Ma'am. To celebrate my homecoming. Change of scenery will do her good. Yes, thank you. But it'll put her in temptation's way. And, and I've been taping lingo for you. Yes, we can watch that when we get back. That sounds reasonable. Okay, outvoted, as per. Now stop frowning, it puts years on you. Well, maybe I've got lots to frown about. And I shall be capping you at two G&Ts. 
Oh, will you now? Yes, I will. So don't make me make a scene. Oh, thank you, sweetheart. Right. A large G and T, please. <laughs> oh, I'm joking. Uh, an orange juice and a very large red wine for my minder. <laughs> and a pint for me. <laughs> and before you get aggravated, I had no intention of drinking. I know I've got to calm it down a bit. All right. Fine. Oh, hello, Elaine. Actually, can I thank you for your wonderful help in my hour of need? You might be seeing a lot more of me. I've just been to view a house. Oh. I'm moving. I want to find somewhere near Tim and Sally and Faye. Well, I keep telling you to do that. Rattling around in that big house. Yeah, it could free up a nice little lump sum. I think I might treat myself to a holiday. I've always dreamed of visiting the Italian lakes. Oh, well, Stephen's your man. He's had a home in Italy for years. Uh, Milan, actually, but I've, I've travelled uh, a lot there. Oh, I might have to pick your brains. Your pleasure. <laughs> So it's about 100 kilometers to the first lake, Lake Garda. That's the biggest one, isn't it? Yeah, that's the biggest and, to my mind, the most beautiful. Oh, we should go. Yes, we should. And we will. Oh, oh there's a, a beautiful little town called Sirmione, which juts out like a long finger into the lake. It feels like an island. Oh, I think I've seen that on Gino's Italian Escapes. Gino? Buy a guidebook. Oh, sorry. Am I monopolizing him? Oh, no, no, don't worry. Uh, those were some of the happiest times of my life. I, um, I fell in love with the place. I think I would, too. This what? Oh, there you are. <laughs> well, where else would I be? It's just that, though. I've been thinking. After everything that's happened, I think I should put my affairs in order. You talk like you're gonna fall off the perch any minute. Well, anyone can, can't they? Anyway, it's death and taxes, as I say. Uh, I think it's death and taxes. ...to update my will and see who gets what. So, I want you to try and get everybody, family, together sometime this afternoon, and I'll be able to tell you all what I've decided. Ron, um, what are you doing, uh, stood up? Why don't you come sit down here? Oh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. oh, is that new perfume you've got on? It's very floral. It's deep heat, actually, because my muscles are still agony. Oh, right. Well, you wear it well. Shall I put the kettle on for us? And uh, see if I can rustle up a couple of Garibaldis, eh? I get that they're almost... Why don't you have a rest? Gail, I'm perfectly capable of walking from your front door to the bistro. Oh, I thought you said you were perfectly capable. No, I'm just saying if I've got my purse. Oh, no, I must have left it at home. Uh, do you think David would fetch it for me? No, no, it's OK. I was going to pay for you anyway. Oh, well, that won't sway my decision. Don't you go lumping me in with the rest. I was going to pay for you because you've been poorly, but if you're going to be like that, I shan't bother. Well, do you blame me? The way David and Sarah are carrying on, buttering me up all the time. There she is, our guest of honour. We've named the soup of the day after you. Well, let's hope the soup isn't as sour as her mood. Yeah, you know, I've got on the road. So, uh, what do you think? Well, it was very, very bitter, actually. <coughs> Sorry. About <coughs> right. Well, uh, can I get you anything else? Yes, just some water to wash all the salt down. Okay, okay, <coughs> right. Dear me. Sorry, it's all right. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> oh, sorry. Oh. <coughs> Ooh. That's better. Sorry about that. Now, shall I put you all out of the misery, eh? Grand, no, this is... It's really lovely us all just being together. Well, I just want to start by saying I am so proud of all of you. You know, you've all done so well. Families, careers. I feel very blessed. I mean, some have done better than others, of course, but then we can't all run a successful business in Milan. <laughs> anyway, you've all done very well and I'm proud of you. So I have decided 
that you don't really need my money. So I'm going to leave the estate to Warts. Not like foot warts. In memory of Alpha. Did he suffer with warts? She means Weatherfield Association of Retail Traders. Alfie loved his warts. <laughs> I'm sure he was very attached. And you know, Sarah, you're so right. Isn't it wonderful to have the whole family together at last? Yes. Eh? Cheers. Cheers. I think it's some daft club. David, it wasn't a daft club. It was very dear to Alfie's heart. He was president for a while. Wasn't oh, he was so proud of that. Um, <laughs> that was a long time ago. And we're family. Mum, I don't want to even think about getting your money, cos I know what that... Well, Sarah does have a point. Oh, listen to you all. Do you know you're like jackals tearing at my corpse? I'm not even dead. It's a bit harsh. Look, you're all so hypocritical, my loves. You don't love me. You love the thought of getting me cash. No, but we do love you. <laughs> well, I do. Well, so do I. Oh, is that why you robbed me to uh, buy the barbers, huh? Blamed it on Lewis, God rest his soul. And look, we sorted through all that. Yeah, we went to prison. Yes, of course you did, you criminals. Gran, I didn't rob from you. I know, my love, I know. But you're a very successful businesswoman. You're married to a lawyer with his own firm and a very fancy flat. <laughs> Which I have to say I've never been invited to. <laughs> oh. No. Come, Gran, you, you are welcome any time. Well, that's lovely, thank you. But you don't need more money, sweetheart. Maybe we should all just calm down. Oh, I'm very calm, Stephen. Well, you don't sound it, ma'am. Right, right, look, Gran. <laughs> look, I don't want your money, but what about the kids? Yes, think of the children. Oh, well, you're playing that card now, are you? They're not cards, they're human beings. Well, I'm sure you'll look after them like the wonderful parents you all are. All I've ever done is love and care for you. Gail, yeah, recently, you have made me feel like an invalid, an idiot, robbed me of my confidence, and made me feel like a right burden. Yeah, I'm sure Gail meant well. Of course I did. Well, anyway, no more arguments now when I make my new will, eh? Oh. That's such a relief. Love you and leave you. Bye. Oh. oh, sweetheart, thank you so much. Oh, hello. Hi. I thought you were meant to be working. All right, gone, Gecko. I forgot my phone, did I? Well, last time I checked, you didn't need a mobile to do a short back and sides. What, what if the school needed me? Oh, yeah, I suppose you've got a point. I've been raised a boy like Max. <laughs> What's that supposed to mean? Uh, don't answer that. How are you getting on having Stephen around? Oh, it's absolutely wonderful. Do you know, he is such a lovely boy, my son. He's 65. Look, did I ask you no? Um, I was thinking, actually, we've not had a chance to welcome him back properly, have we? Why don't we have a nice family lunch today? Oh, yes, that's a wonderful idea. Well, great. I'll uh, text uh, Sarah and Nick and... David, you'll be there, won't you? Yeah, with bells on. Oh, don't feel too obliged. Right, see ya. To Steve. Thank you. Thanks so much for organising this. Oh, not at all. Just wanted to really welcome you home properly. Yeah, after all the drama. Something like. Is it no Nick? No, he's um he's had to go to some event at Sam's school. Can I just ask, is this one of those meals where we all pay for ourselves, or...? Honestly. Oh, I'm only asking. Well, I suppose it'll be steak if your mother's paying. Otherwise, it'll be half a bowl of chips if you are. Oh, am I paying? Well, sweetheart, yes, because you did organise it and invite everybody. Oh, I suppose I did. <laughs> Cheers, Gail. Oh, lovely, thank you. Steak it is. I think I'll just have the Caesar salad. Oh, lovely choice. Oh, lovely choice, Stephen. Did your brain literally stop growing when you were ten years old? Maybe, yeah, because that's around the time my 13-year-old sister got herself pregnant and mentally and emotionally scarred me for the rest of my life. You know, you are an absolute... Sarah, David, 
So, what do you fancy to eat, Gran? Um, well, I think I might try the fish. Oh, well, as long as David's okay with that decision on your behalf. Sarah? Hilarious. Well, it's not meant to be funny, is it? I mean, that's what you're doing. You're trying to control her. I'm managing her finances. This is fish. Oh, here he goes, banging on about your money again. What are you oh, talking please. about? Oh, all right, all right. That is enough. Uh, don't go. Oh, Audrey. Just blame these two. Please don't go. Oh, thanks, love. I can't find me house keys. Have you checked the front door? That's where you left them over there. That was last week and I only did it the once. Can I tell you about that? No. That's why she's losing pot. To be outside wandering the streets soon with a tea cosy on her head, wow. shouting at pigeons. <laughs> Found them. No thanks to you. Oh, and before I forget. Do you want me? Shut up, David. This is important. I booked us a table for a meal tomorrow for your grand's birthday. Oh, great. Another family meal. Can't wait. Well, I just thought it might help us to put all these rows behind us and to cheer her up a bit now Stephen's gone. Well, I think it's a great idea. And we'll all be on our best behaviour this time, won't we? Yes, dear. Mm. Mm. Object of Graham. I have actually planned something for her to make up for, you know, everything that happened. But I've not told Shoney yet, because I want to keep it a surprise. Well, are you going to tell me? Yeah, all right, but you have to promise to keep it zipped. I wish. Oh. Well, fed up. Lonely, now Stephen's gone. Thanks to certain people. Ma'am, I understand that you're upset. And I am sorry that things weren't handled better, but you're not on your own. You do have other family, too. Oh, please don't remind me. And I've booked us all a table tomorrow so that we can all sit down together, put this behind us and celebrate your birthday. Sweetheart, I do appreciate what you're trying to do. But I'm going to tell you right now, I won't be there. Ma'am, please don't be like that. Like what? Hurt, angry, disappointed. I'm all of them. The last thing I feel like doing right now is celebrating. What are you doing here? I forgot my charger, so I just nipped back for it. Well, what's it got to do with you? Oh, David, do you always have to be so obnoxious and belligerent? It's my USP, isn't it? It's the only thing I've got. No, hang on a minute. I need to talk to you. It's about your gran. Is she all right? No, she's not. Let me guess, she's angry at me for driving away golden balls? She's angry at everybody. And yes, she is upset about Stephen, but now she's refusing to do anything for her birthday or even come to the meal tomorrow. Hmm. I'm sorry, but I mean, I'm hoping that this surprise will make it up to her. Well, I hope you're right. But if you are genuinely sorry, then she needs to hear it from you. Mm. I'll drop her a text in a bit. No, David, that's not enough. Please, just go round there, see her, talk to her today. All right, fine. If you're done with your little guilt trip, I'm off to work. Thank you. You are. In a manner of speaking, I suppose. Did he or didn't he? Well, it could have been an apology, I don't know. He's very contrite. It's only words, Gail. Well, everything's only words. Is it? Is it? I mean, you should have heard him. When I asked him if he'd come over to fit my lampshades, he couldn't think of an excuse quick enough. I thought Stephen fixed your light shades. Yes, but he never got around to it. Well, David will. Oh. And he's got something else in the works that I think you might be rather pleased about. And Sarah's helping with it. And Nick, too. Well, whatever it is, I don't want it. You're very grouchy at the moment. Do you blame me? Our family does nothing but argue. I mean, why can't we all be friends? That's the only thing I want, Gail. We can all be friends. Ah, you can't be. He takes after you, actually. Don't you compare me to David. <laughs> Please come for the meal, ma'am. I don't want to. If you can't give us an hour or two on your birthday, then what hope have we got? Why did none of us listen? I see you've covered yourself in glory again. What? Your gran? 
I apologised. In so many words. What did she want me to do? Get down on my hands and knees? She wanted some help with a light shade. Yeah, Mum, and I offered. I said I'd change all my plans. How did you get on this afternoon? Oh, we're on track. I mean, we wouldn't be. Not if I'd have had to go over to Grassmere Drive in traffic. How long would that have taken me? Well, she's agreed to come for the meal tomorrow. Thanks to yours truly and my powers of persuasion. Mm. Respect to Big G. But we all have to be on our best behaviour. And by we, you mean me. And Sarah, she's far from innocent. Whereas Nick. Look, if we all make an effort, it should be a lovely occasion which your gran will appreciate very much. Well, I hope she appreciates this present that's costing me an arm and a leg on a wing. She'll be thrilled. You not think she's, I don't know, too old? It's a gesture. Mm. She can be hard work sometimes. She can be. I know. She takes after you. All right, I will. What are you doing here? You should be outside. Why should I be outside? Waiting for her to get in, and you can give us the signal. Well, what is the signal? We hide, she comes in, we jump out. Oh, you're joking. No, that would be great. Uh, she's an old lady, you'll give her a heart attack. Well, it's hardly a surprise, is it? I mean, she knows she's coming to the bistro, and she knows it's her birthday. What do you want to do? We all just stand around and say happy birthday? <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. You sound like fun to me. Oh, look, the real fun starts with that surprise gift, doesn't it? You know, I'm not sure about it. Well, hang on, no one's even told me what it is. That's because you'll blab. No, I won't. I never blabbed about you in that magazine. That was nothing to do with me. Somebody left it in the barbers. What? Right. I think she's going to love it. <gasps> is it skydiving? I bet it's skydiving, isn't it? <gasps> oh! Happy birthday! Here she is. You don't look a day over 80. Oh, Nick, bubbly. Uh, do you think we should wait a bit, eh? Just till we've got some food? No! Have some shampers on your birthday cat, you go. Don't mind, really. Oh, yeah, I'll have a glass of bubbles with you. Take no notice and we'll write your here. Oh, right, right at the top. Oh, all of them. Thank you, sweet. Little glasses. Yes. Olives. Oh, there we go. Thank you, sir. Um, yeah. It's fine, thanks. Do you not like it, man? I said she would have had some at hot. Yeah, but this is great. Cold spread, everyone can dip in, picky bits. Yeah, but old people like hot food. OK, uh, Gran, do you want hot food? Uh, no, it's all right. I'm OK with this. You've hardly eaten anything. I'm not terribly hungry, to be honest. Well, why don't you get a doggy bag? That's what I'm going to do. It's free, isn't it? You know, and it saves me cooking for the kids. Are you OK, man? You're very quiet. Oh, I'm high, but that's not like me, is it? She'd be tired. Old people get tired. Oh, yes, that's it. Yes, I'm old and I'm tired. You stop giving her a hard time. She's not old. Well, I mean, she's 82. That is quite old. OK, Gran. It's nearly time for your surprise. Oh, Nick, I haven't got room for cake. Oh, no, no, this is way better than cake. You're going to love it, ma'am. Brandy? Yeah, that's... No, I have to be blindfolded. Because it's a surprise, ma'am. Oh, I could have broken my neck on those flaming cobbles. Mm. Come on, it's such a palaver, all this. You can take it off now. I mean, we're here. Here you go. Ta-da! What do you reckon? Well... It's my old cellar. Well, it's not old anymore. No, we're leasing it back off, don't we? Yeah, for you. The papers are ready to be signed and everything. Thought it'd give you a new sense of purpose. Got all your old equipment? Oh, which haven't been used for over a year. No, it's all been tested. It's all fine. Yeah, everything's up and running. So, what do you think? It's good, isn't it? It's not as good as skydiving. Surprised. We busted a gut keeping it a secret. Yeah, all chipped in, did a bit. Even Nick picked up a paintbrush. Yeah. Stood there at door frame, giving it this like it was <laughs> Sistine Chapel. If we'd all gone at his speed, we'd have had to start again by the time we got to the end, like they do on the fourth bridge. Never mind fourth bridge, he'd have still been on his first. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it was an absolutely lovely gesture. So thank you all. Oh, well, they know what rat bags have been recently, so they just wanted to make it up to you. We contacted Stephen as well and uh, apologised if he'll come back. What did he say? Yeah, he said he'd think about it. Well, all I can think about right now is pudding. So why don't we go back to the bistro before the management think we've done a runner? <laughs> <laughs> I think I can smooth it over with him. To be honest, I'm actually very full. It's been quite a busy morning. So, uh, I'm going to go home if that's all right with you. 
and have 40 winks, OK. Grant, do you want me to walk you around to the streetcars? No, David, I'll manage. about my painting. I did my share. You never would have got that deal with Debbie without being for me. Yeah, you, you know, you're absolutely right. When are you available for the medal ceremony? <laughs> I, I was just saying. Stop squabbling. It's a joint effort. No, it, what, we weren't really hard on that. I just thought she appreciates it. Yeah, she did seem a bit... Ungrateful. Underwhelmed, I was going to say. I suppose it takes a lot to get excited at 82, which is probably a good thing. No, she wasn't herself, though, was she? Probably because you want three sheets to win. <laughs> well, some things just don't need saying, do they? She wasn't quite right, though, was she? I'm going to pop round to Grassmere Driver, check up on it. Maybe go via the flying horse first. <laughs> Get away with it. You'd need a team of police frogmen to find that body. Or women. Huh? Yeah, women. Can get women divers and all. Well, yeah, but I'm not going to say police frog people, am I? <laughs> it sounds like something from Doctor Who. Oh, hello. Hello. Is Gran in bed already? No. When I let myself in, she wasn't there. And where would she be at this hour? Ah. Well, she wasn't in the rover, so I've, uh, I've no idea. Will you ride a mobile? At least six times. Well, what if she's, like, had a fall or she's had a funny turn or something, Mum? Do you think we should go back there and see when she gets back? Yeah, I, I think we should, but uh, I'll just give her another try first. All right, I'll stick my shoes on. Hello, Gail. Ma'am. Hello. Are you all right? Where are you? Well, I'm at home, love. Where else would I be? Well, you weren't at home half an hour ago, because I've just been round there. Half an hour ago? Oh, I popped out for some milk. <laughs> well, why didn't you answer me calls? Oh, come on. I wasn't going to whip out my mobile out of the street, was I? I'd be a sitting duck for muggers. Well, um, as long as you're OK. I'm just tired out, love. I'll be right as rain when I'm in bed. See you So I popped into the salon to see you, but, uh... I wasn't there. No, all closed up with a sign saying, go to the barbers. Is she taking the day off? And apparently, uh, according to Maria, you're taking tomorrow off as well? Uh, someone made me. You've been told to ease yourself back into work gradually. Oh, come on, I don't want to be rattling round the home all day, thank you. You're not at home. You're here. Oh, don't be so pedantic. Well, seeing as you're now at a loose end tomorrow, I thought I'd treat you. Both of you. I've, uh, booked you into a spa with an overnight stay. Oh. It's, uh, it's in Yorkshire. It's a little ways away, but it'll be worth the journey. There's a steam room, a sauna, massages. Oh, and I've, uh, I've arranged a lovely lunch for you, too. Oh, it must be costing you a fortune, sweetheart. You're worth it. Honestly. <laughs> He's a treasure. Ah. <laughs> uh, I don't want to panic here, but um, I think we should take his teas and, and, and go out front. Stephen's booked us into a spa. Right, great. Come on, let's go now. No, not you. Gail and me, that's all. No, I mean, l let's just move. Let's get out. What's going on? I was pegging the washing and I felt the ground move. Who knew hanging out the washing could be so exciting? No, I mean the sinkhole. I think the sinkhole's opening up again. I know that. She's in bits here. Oh, it's understandable. Because I'm sure it's nothing to worry about. Oh, you didn't see what it was like last year. An old drain collapsed, right? Well, Apparently, it was Victorian. Yeah, but it was all repaired and signed off, wasn't it? Yeah, like, yeah. yeah, yeah I've, I've got the guarantee somewhere. Right, yeah. Oh, okay. Right, bye. Right, Shona's on her way over to the house now. 
Oh, has she got her civil engineering degree? No, with Leo. She's managed to get hold of him. Oh, well, he's an expert. He'll know what to do. Yeah, he was so helpful last year with it. We'll uh, have to postpone the trip to the spa tomorrow, though. No, surely not. Well, yes, I mean, if it's as bad as it sounds, we can hardly go for a relaxing spa, can we? Oh. You moving out? So you had a nice time? Uh, well, apart from me, Mum, I'm not going to go at me about the bathroom. Oh, she was in there for hours. Yeah, yeah, she does so. But we're very grateful, aren't we, Mum? Mm. You're right, Gran. I'm still breathing. Oh, an estate agent came around to value her house while we were out. Uh, I told her it must have been an administrative error. Yeah, what else could it have been? Well, eh, it could have been someone pretending to be Steve and, you know, weighing up the inheritance or even just stealing it. Oh, I'm sure. oh, hang on. You don't think this is me, do you? Yeah, that does sound quite proactive for him. Yeah, exactly. And you have got form. Oh, look, how many times, Grant? I mean, that, that, that was like 90%, Nick, 95 even. Are you surprised? I don't trust you. I mean, you're a liar. Well, you want to talk about liars? Leo, don't. What's that? Yeah, have you got something to say? Look, it's none of my business. No, it's not. But if you want to talk about lies, ask that one. About why he's lying to you over where he slept last night. Come on, my love. Well, because it's embarrassing, OK? I, I, I got a bit drunk and, oh. and I couldn't find a taxi. And then I doze off and uh, when I woke up, it just it didn't seem like it was worth, you know, finding a hotel. And he got that drunk? After you left us yesterday. Well, I didn't get legless, but I, I had a few cervezas in that, uh, that new tapas place. Hang on, you didn't seem that drunk when I saw you. You were brushing your teeth. Uh, sorry. I still don't get why you were involved in all this. He's not. Because I know he's lying. Oh, you know what? Just ignore him. He, he hates me because Jenny got drunk and kissed me. What? Oh, oh I, I thought he was being narky with me because you told him. What, like... Kissed, kiss, like snogged. I, I, I was drunk and I was on the rebound. We'd split up. <laughs> oh, we were on a break. Shut up, Shona. With him. I'm so sorry. I, I, I can explain. I expected you to get fed up of me and leave. So when I thought that that had happened, I. What are you I, I thinking? I wasn't. Mm, not with your brain, anyway. Ugh. Look, it, it wasn't like I tried it on. She was probably just on the rebound. I was in the right place at, well, the wrong place at the wrong time. No, no. All this does is prove how much of a liar you are. Oh, listen, don't put this on me. Leo, please. Believe me, you are not worth it. And as soon as you lot realize hey, Listen, that, I think you said enough. Get off me! No! <gasps> Yeah, Paul. <laughs> Somebody call the police, Gail. No, I don't think we need to get the police involved. You didn't mean it, did you, Leo? All right, maybe you did, but it's my fault. Gail! Hold oh. oh, Stop stirring. I don't want the fun to end, do I? I don't, David. I, I deserved it. Too right, you did. Leo! We should report that man. Well, we're going to talk about what he actually said. I can't remember what he said. It was all about him, sleeping in his car. I told you, I'd had a drink, I couldn't get a cab, I didn't want to drive. I was being a responsible citizen. Yeah, but why lie about it? Why say you stayed in a hotel? Because unlike you, I have a public image to keep up. And I didn't want all and sundry knowing I'd drunk too much and slept in my car. Well, why don't I believe you? Because you're being a pain in the booth. Look, Leo will spin anything he can to make me look bad. And like I said, I understand I hurt the poor man's pride. Yeah, that's what I thought. But you know what's weird? He didn't know about the kiss until you told him. And he was genuinely shocked, wasn't it? Actually, it's true, he was. Well, yeah, he must have already suspected, you know, seen a look between me and Jenny. Now, that's got to be the reason he's meddling. But why is he calling you a liar? And we've still not cleared up all this estate agent business. Look, either, like we discussed, they made a mistake and forgot to cancel my booking, or someone else wanted a valuation and deliberately used my name. Me? What? Do you want a black eye to go with your fat lip? No more oh, of this, please, no. <sighs> Stephen Reed. Oh, Stephen Reed. Look, give me a minute, OK? Ah, uh, business. Sorry. Excuse me. Grant, you Whatever can't. Whatever 
You were gonna say, don't. I do not. 30 minutes on a good morning. And you use all the hot water. I do not. That's a lie. It's Max who hogs it. We can hear you singing. No more tears. Donna Summer and Barbara Streisand. Now, that is definitely not Max. It's the one time in the day I get to myself. The rest of the time You're I'm making running us around. run around after you? The last time you ran around after me was 2007. Oh, no, I had flu and I remember it because you Well, said... haven't we got more important things to be arguing about? Don't start all that again. Like... This one, Mr. Pants on fire. Oh, I see the conversation hasn't moved on. Actually, we were talking about Gail hogging the bathroom. Except I don't. You always did when you came to Milan. Ha-ha! <laughs> <laughs> Can we just change the subject, please? How is your business called? Fine. What business is it you actually do? Oh, David. What? He doesn't seem to do anything, does he? All, all he does here is just swan around being Canadian. Oh, you're really scraping the barrel there, David. But... What does he seem to do? He just goes out for lunches, goes to hotels, or doesn't go to hotels. Actually, do you know, I take it back. Can we go back to me hogging the bathroom? Yes, please. Well, does that mean I can go in first tomorrow, then? I've got a routine. I'll get it. <coughs> Gabrielle? Well, hello. Oh. oh. <laughs> Did you know she was coming? I had no idea. I was in the area. I thought I'd surprise you. Oh. Tell me what if you were coming. We'd have got posher snacks in. Well, I wasn't sure I'd have time after my business meeting. But it was shorter than I thought. And somewhat disappointing. I didn't get the deal I was hoping for. Oh, sweetheart, I'm sorry to hear that. I just wish Sarah was here to see you, because she goes on about her time with you in Milan with such fondness, honestly. She was like a daughter to me in those years. Oh. How come you ain't got kids? Sure not. Sorry. Oh, don't be sorry. I just never wanted them. I mean, I love them when they're old enough to be treated like adults, but I never had much of a maternal instinct. Too ruthless? <laughs> You better believe it. Gabrielle, top up love. Mm -hmm. No doubt she needs to get back to her hotel. It's getting late. Nonsense. I am enjoying myself, Stephen. It's so nice to reconnect with your family again. Oh. <laughs> There's so much I've yet to tell them. Oh, super. <laughs> Cheers. 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 Fingers all frozen pizza, Gabrielle. She doesn't want pizza. She's from Italy, where they eat pizza every day. <laughs> I'm all right. It's a little late for me. Oh, it's a little late for everyone, actually. Well, I'm hungry. Don't oh, be on the wacky backy girl. Just more wine than the rest of us, I uh, think. I refuse to take that. I have not, and I won't David, take it. David, mediator needed. Oh, don't be so oh, what shall I do now? What's happening? I don't oh. know what point you're trying to make. <laughs> oh, yes, you do. I could tell your family so much about you they don't know. Then where would you get your money from? You know I need them on my side. Then you better work harder, because I want it next month. Or else next visit, I'm gonna have... Then where would you get your money from? You know I need them on my side. Then you better work harder, because I want it next month. Or else next visit, I'm gonna have a good old chinwag with your dear mother and tell her all the things you've been up to. Are you sure I can't tempt you with a fish finger? Actually, Gail, I am sorry. I am suddenly very tired. It has been so lovely to see you all. I might be passing this way again in a few weeks. Perhaps then I can stay a bit longer. <laughs> okay, bye bye. Bye bye. bye. Take bye. care now. Bye bye. bye. Oh, what a shame. Oh. What do you want for your tea, love? I don't care. I could do your macaroni cheese. You like that? Mm, whatever. I believe you, by the way. I don't think you'd do something so awful. Especially to Maria. Cheers, then. And yeah, macaroni cheese would be nice. No, um, forget it. I'll go to the cafe. You're not going anywhere. What, are you going to stop me? 
David. I've just spent the afternoon with Maria. You know, the one who's been getting death threats. What does she think I've done it? Well, she can see why it makes sense, yeah. No, what you mean is that you've made her see why it makes sense, even though there's no evidence. Yeah, well, we'll see about that. Hello? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm here with him now, actually. Yeah. Right, well, thanks for letting me know. Okay, bye-bye. That was the police. They're on the way round. They want to speak to all of us, so unless you want to get done for evading arrest, I'd stay exactly where you are. You know what we found out about your Max here? Yeah, and the implications, really. <laughs> implications? Max. You know, if the wind changes, your face will stick like that. You're on a suspended sentence. This is serious. Oh, this is serious. Do you really want to look like that for the rest of your life? Stop it. Anyway, you'll be pleased to know we'll be taking no further action in regards to Max. What? You joking? No messages on Max's phone or laptop were sent to or referred to Maria Connor. Could I actually get those back, please? Of course, yeah. Cheers. Oh, uh, remember what I said about your face. I was certain he was behind this. I mean, it, it wasn't an easy decision to report him. Well, it's good news for you, then. Shall I show you out, officer? I'm sure you've got lots of proper criminals to go and catch. Of course, yeah. Thanks for your time. Yeah, I'm sorry for wasting yours. You might have some apologising to do, sir. Blimey. I mean, you know it's bad if a cop has given you dad advice. Just hear some of the things the police have said to me over the years about my life choices, bordering on the unprofessional, some of them. Shall I put that programme on where they go round to each other's B&Bs and moan about the dusting? You like that one? Cheers you up when you know they hate each other. I just can't believe I got this so wrong. Oh, give yourself a break, David. Max will understand in time. And I'm sure one day he'll forgive you. Oh, yeah? I can just picture it now. Me, old and grey, and him saying what a fantastic father figure I am. And then we both have to duck as a giant pig flies above his heads. So, if you're looking... And, uh, how are the mains? Oh, lovely. Mm. Don't worry if it wasn't. I can have a word with the owners because I sat right next to it. <laughs> oh, sorry, force of habit. I'll, uh, I'll go and check on your desserts. Oh, hang on a minute, Debbie. I think Nick wants to say something first. OK, no problem. Uh, David, uh, top everybody's glass up, please. Uh, yeah. I can't tilt it for water. I've had luck. Um, well, I've got some apple juice here. This will do, won't it? I just want to say that we're here to remember Natasha. Uh, a fantastic mum and a wonderful human being taken far too early. Sometimes there's no rhyme or reason to these things. They're just unfair and unexpected. But what I do know is Natasha will just care about your welfare and your happiness. And that's all I care about and all the people around this table care about. You know, we've got to find acceptance. No matter how hard that might be. You know, sometimes just there's no reason to these things. Could you be any more obvious? I know that's aimed at me. Yeah, subtlety's never been his strong point. Sam, just let your dad finish, eh? No, no, no. It's fine. Let him speak. It's Sam's day more than anyone else. I've got nothing to say. Uh is that it? Shall I get Debbie to bring in the desserts? No, no, hang on a minute. Um, Sam's written a lovely poem about his mum, so maybe you'd like to read it, Sam? What's the point? It's just words. My words. I already know what I think. Oh, quite a while. I went to see him yesterday. In prison? Who's in prison? Harvey. The man who killed my mum. I've been writing to him. Why? I want to know why he did what he did. I want to understand it. There's nothing to understand, though. I mean, didn't he just think she was Leanne? I know that, but I want to know how he feels about it. If he regrets it, if he's sorry. You're not going to get answers from an animal like that, lovey. They're beyond reason. She's right, Sam. You keep saying that you want to make peace with what happened, 
But when I tell you how I might achieve that, you won't listen. It's not that we won't listen. We just think it's going to make it ten times worse. How could they be worse? I'm going out. Right, look, I'll come with you. Alone? Oh, I'm not allowed even that. Why don't you let him go, my love? Come on. You've tried it your way, sweetheart. Let me try it mine. There you go. Thanks. Can you tell what they are? Oh, um... Well, um, they're pterodactyls. Pterodactyls? Uh, well, I, I can see where he's coming from. Why would I put a pterodactyl on a cappuccino? Do you like pterodactyls? The flaming seahorses. Oh, all oh, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now that you say it, it's little... obvious. Yeah, 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 it is, it is. Yeah, um, we can better get that. Yeah. Thanks for the seahorses. Mr. Martini's artichokes are ripe and delicious. Il cut chelsea, del signor Martini, sono maturi e buonissimi. The helicopter is dangerously overloaded. The helicopter is... <gasps> what are you playing at? I didn't see you. Didn't see me? I've got three enormous day-glow orange pumpkins. You could see them from lower orbit. I was doing me Italian. What? Well, I've, I've got this app and... Well, that's a zooka in Italian. It's a flaming smash zooka. Look at me top! Oh, that's nothing. Look, I, I yeah, just... Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Come on, Eileen. Give us your hand. Come on, give us your hand. Eileen. Eileen, wake up. Oh, no. What's happened? Well, Eileen. Eileen, love, speak to me. Maybe one of us should give a mouth to mouth. Eileen, wake up, please. Eileen, love, it's George. Just try and open your eyes for me. Oh, my Lord, what's happened? I think I should call an ambulance. Yes, please. Oh, I'm all fingers and thumbs. I'll do it. Got it. Got it, girl. Oh, oh for goodness sake. This is all my fault. Eileen, love, I've brought you a vanilla slice. It's your favourite, love. Help's come in. Just hang in there, darling. Oh, Eileen, please, just try and open your eyes, love. I mean, I know we've never seen eye to eye, <gasps> but... Eileen? Oh, my eyelash. Where am I? No one knows, because apparently you've got a phone. Oh, she gave it to me to turn off the notifications and I forgot to give it back. Yeah, I don't like her not having a phone. I mean, what if something well, happened? To her or Sam? I'm sure she's fine. Sam, too. Anyway, we're going to the bistro for a family lunch. Are you coming? I know. I, I got your text on Mum's phone. Yeah, well, I really don't think you should be looking at other people's private texts. Well, I was looking out for Mum. If you'd been in my shoes, I'm sure you'd have done the same thing. So, uh, how do you think Mum's doing at the moment? Yeah, I think she's um, a lot better. Yeah, I do too. In fact, you know, I think she's strong enough to cope on her own. Oh, um, I'm not sure about that. You know, it's, it's been great seeing you all, but me uh, moving away might give Mum a, a stronger sense of independence. You're going back to Canada? Well, maybe. Or, uh, Italy. But, you know, I, I think Mum's ready to stand on her own two feet. Thanks, Shona. Yes. And turned on the um, vibrate option. So it vibrates every time I get a text? Oh, I don't like the sound of that. You need something so you know I'm trying to get hold of you. It's an emergency. When I get sick of a text, I just turn the sound off on my phone. You turn me on to silent. How do you do that? There's a button on the side. Oh, yeah, it's right here. Oh, yes, that's better. Well, you can turn it back on now. I know how to shut her up. Oh, <laughs> shut me. Right, you two have a good time? Yeah. Can I tell him? Of course you can. I'm going to see the Northern Lights. Oh, great. Well, do you telescope? No, in Norway. Norway? 
Me and Sam are going on a Northern Lights cruise because he's been through such a rough time lately. I wanted to treat him. You're taking him on a boat? On your own? Well, I'll have my phone. Look, I can't let you spend all your money on a cruise. Oh. How much will it cost? Does it matter? Life's short. Life is for living. This is just the beginning. Come on. The beginning of what? Well, of all the adventures still to come. I'm going to live the dream. And then I'm going to do an equity release thing on Grasmere Drive and the world will be my lobster. Oyster. What? Oh, yes, <laughs> You are so close. Have you been drinking? No. Are you sure this is a good idea? Yeah, absolutely, thank you. I've seen the adverts. It's easy. You just have to fill in a few forms and then I'll have enough money to live life to the full. <laughs> Cheers. This is such a bad idea, seriously. I mean, it doesn't matter to me, but you'll get a fraction of the true value and when you die, they get the house. These people are bloodsuckers. Hi, Dad. Sorry I'm late. Uh, Mum wants to release equity from Grasmere. I think it's a big no-no. Why does she want to do that? I am here, you know. What if you were to have a medical emergency? You might want to draw on some of it. Stephen, I've told you I'm fine. I just want a bit of fun. Yeah, I mean, first off, she's taking some to see the Northern Lights. Hello. If Uncle Stephen thinks this is a bad idea, that house is a really valuable asset. Guard it with your life. Tell these, these money-grabbing thieves to keep their hands off. Yeah, it might be a bit mad, you two go together. He can't miss any more school. No, he won't. I'll make sure of that, honestly. What if you have another fall? I can look after it. Oh, sweetheart, thank you so much. Yeah, I, I just think it's a bit of a shame that your other grandkids are gonna miss out. Oh, that's all. Well, I mean, Max and Lily, they only got £10 in their birthday cards from you. And I, I'm just a bit of a stickler for fairness, that's all. I mean, Sarah always used to get more than me at Christmas anyway, so... Uh, that is rubbish! You both got exactly the same number of presents for exactly the same value. Well, kids these days can be very materialistic. Some of them anyway. Oh, well... I just wanted to do something nice, to be honest. But if it's going to put anyone's nose out of joint, then, um... We can't go, Sam. I'm so, so sorry, sweetheart. Stop. I've been a go at days. I've still got the scars to prove it. <laughs> I mean, that remote controlled car, that was way cheaper than Sarah's Barbie camper van that you got her, which, by the way, was the must have Christmas present that year. Two pounds cheaper, which is why you got a cat gun. But a, a 50p cap gun, oh. yeah. I mean, you do the maths. I'm glad I'm an only child, no sibling rivalry. Exactly. Right, well, I've got some to say on the subject. Well, I've not finished, actually. I mean, looking back now, I think it just might be the worst Christmas of my life. Oh, I'm sure it wasn't, David. <laughs> and it was your birthday as well. Well, exactly. I mean... You were spoiled rotten. You always were. The point is, I don't want my children to go through the same sense of injustice that I had to go through, that's all. I'm sorry, Sam. Fair is fair. I'm, I'm not trying to be a killjoy. You are, but you have a point. It is a bit unfair. If I want to spend every penny I've got asking Alan Musk to fly me and Sam into space, then I will. Elon hasn't technically entered space yet. Mm, that's true. Yes, could you just b both be quiet, please? I'm just saying. Yes. If I want to take Sam somewhere, I don't want someone here totting it all up. I love my family. Of course I do. I love you all and I love my great-grandchildren. But it's my money and my treat. I'd still advise against releasing equity. I don't see the point of tying your money up in bricks and mortar when you could be making wonderful, wonderful memories. No. I am taking Sam away. And that is my final decision. OK. OK. I get it. Maybe. Oh, that looks amazing. Ugh, oysters. What's wrong with oysters? They're slimy and disgusting. Oh. Lewis once ordered a dozen oysters and champagne when he took me to a swanky oh. restaurant. My favourite were the Malpec from Prince Edward Island. Is that in Canada? Yes. How decadent are we comparing who has had the best oysters, eh? <laughs> Couldn't even afford a jar of mussels when I was growing up. Anyway, I'm going to ring the mortgage people tomorrow. Hey, I've got a better idea. I'll pay for the cruise. Now, I know you wanted some 
fund money as well, but if I take care of the main expense, then you won't need to release any equity. We've had this argument, David. I don't want to sound like some flash, Harry, but business is doing really well. No, I can have oysters any day of the week, but I'd rather do something special for you. I'd rather go to the Caribbean than Norway. I bet it's freezing. We're not going to sunbathe. We're going to see the Northern Lights. Yes, but what if somebody turns them off and then you've gone all that way for nothing? <laughs> They're not actual lights, you know. They're caused by a cloud of electrically charged particles. They can travel millions of miles before they collide with the Earth. See. Mm. Well, I'll be at a gin tasting in the ballroom. Do you know, I still can't believe how generous you are. Oh, it's my pleasure. I'll set them. Um, I've just nipped to the loo, sweetheart. I'm up in a minute. When are you going to tell Audrey that you're thinking of leaving again? Who told you? Gail. Oh, hey, well, I was planning to, but I think I might stick around a bit longer now. You know, I'm worried if I uh, leave now, it might set her back. Mm, you've got more patience than me. Living with Audrey would drive me to murder. <laughs> she pours it a jug and throws it. Watch, it turns to snow, because it's minus 30 degrees. Oh, it's like the opposite of Thailand. Well, I suppose it's going to be cold wherever you go for the northern light, isn't it? I mean, how do you tell minus 10 from minus 30? It's going to be big coats and hot toddy weather. Well, I'm sure you can tell the difference. I mean, Norway is surely the better. Sam's got his heart set on Canada. Oh, do you remember that restaurant you took me to when I visited? They had a little pet moose that you could feed, remember? Yeah, it died. The restaurant closed. Uh, no, I, I googled it. Uh, well, listen, you know, uh, Norway is less time traveling and, uh, well, more time for fun. Let me find a moose. Yes, come on. Sam's got his heart set on Canada. Why are you trying to block it? Is there something you're not telling us? The catastrophizer, but it was all over the news. When it happened, the lady was only a little older than Mum, and the child the same age as Sam. I mean, at minus 30 degrees, you only need to take a wrong turn or misjudge the time, and... Well, you know, they discovered their hypothermic bodies uh, a week later. Heavens. I know they're excited, but I wouldn't sleep if she took him to the Northwest Territories. Well, she mustn't. Yeah. Blame me, you know? Say, uh, I don't know, uh, whatever, that, that uh, I've only got a limited budget. I'll play along. No. We'll be honest that we'd be worried if the weather was too cold. Honesty's always the best. Take me with you. <laughs> She's joking. I am not joking. All right, I am joking, but send pictures from Milan. What's your number? You'll make Gabrielle late. Max, come and say goodbye. Uh, uh, yeah, bye. Oh, sorry, teenagers. <laughs> hey, Gail, dry clean or replace? Your choice. You said you had a magic stain removing stick. I lied. Now he's interested. I did not spill all that. It was only a splash. If it wasn't the first splash, you clumsy old bat. <sighs> Eileen Grimshaw. Gail, more surnames than hot dinners. There! That! Trying to fool me into thinking that you'd called in the angels. You have seriously lost the plot. You are seriously... Watch and learn. It'll be you getting screamed at in the street next. It won't. <laughs> I'll fix it. <gasps> you don't believe me? <gasps> Better than that, I don't care. Oh, I will only pay for what I spilt. I mean, you've chucked a bottle of Merlot at it. I will chuck a bottle of Merlot over you unopened. Hey, come on, give it here. Let's go. Let them fight it out. I'll go and put this in so good gracious. You know, my mates say you can never be friends with an ex. What do you think? Well, they can certainly make life more complicated. And all I ever want is a quiet life. <laughs> Laters. Hello. 
we were on the bat early. Yeah, well, it's school wrong. And anyway, it helps me get my steps in. Shona's challenged me, but she's impossible to beat. Do you know, I think she stands behind that cafe counter, marching on the spot just to stop me winning. <laughs> well, it's one way to get you to take Lily to school. Do you think she's playing me? Oh, the cheeky little... <laughs> Hey, you all right? Hello, love. How did you manage to get your car sorted? Oh, yes, what's happening with her? Oh, well, like I said, I think it's time for something a bit more eco-friendly, so it's all good. Well, electric cars are so expensive. Yeah, does that mean that Mam will get one of those charging point things? There's one of the posh moms at school lives in that lakeside development. Mom, there's no lake. See Motherfield, it's a canal. <laughs> yeah, well, anyway, she's got one because I saw it when Lily went there for tea. Mm. And you haven't forgotten, have you, that you're going to make an appointment for Harry to get oh. his fringe cut. I mean, he can hardly see out of it. I will do, Mum. I'll go and have a word with Gran, but I just need to have a quick chat with Stephen. OK, I'll leave you to. <laughs> what about a nice red one? Would be good. It'd be cheerful. <laughs> so, um, the, the meat? Uh, hi, uh, Mr. Messino, is Stephen Reed here? Uh, no, 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 I, I know you don't uh, owe me any wages. Um, but I, 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 was, uh, I, was, I was wondering, uh, well, I, I was actually uh, hoping uh, that, I, that, I, that I might have my, uh, my job back. <laughs> yes, I, I know, and I'm, I'm, I'm sorry uh, about that. Uh, uh, thing is, uh, my... My mother is very ill. Yes. Oh, th thank you. Uh, but the thing is, um, I was uh, wondering if you might, um, you know, possibly reconsider. Uh... Well, no, no, no. I, I, absolutely. Uh, you, you six uh, fellas are, are an institution. What? Uh, no, I, I, absolutely. I, I, I can be in, in Bolton in, in, in an hour. Oh, well, listen, I, I appreciate you, uh, you seeing me. Uh, thank you. Who was that? It's the first I've heard of it. She attempted suicide. Yes. Well, you still haven't said who you were talking to. <sighs> Just... Uh, business associate. I got the time wrong for a meeting and he and his team weren't very happy about it. Apparently they came into the office especially. I was trying to uh, drum up sympathy. It looked like it worked. So, mum's the word then. Thank you. But you know, uh, saying mum's ill might be uh, a bit of an exaggeration, but truth be told, I'm worried about her. You know, she's, she's not getting any younger. That goes for all of us. And then there's the drinking. You know, I, I might be more aware of it because I'm living with her and, and I see it up close. I like to think I do my bit. Oh, of course, of course, you, you're a fantastic daughter. And believe me, I, I feel guilty for not having come over sooner. Well, you're here now. And I'm just grateful you're here to keep an eye on her, as I'm sure she is. Well, look, I, I better get to the meeting. Yeah, I'm in Bolton. Good luck. Well, to my mind, <laughs> if it's a toss-up between the Canaries and Clithero, come on. I just saw your Stephen just now. Um, he seems a little bit fraught. Fraught, really? Yeah, you know, short-tempered, verging on rude, if I'm honest. Oh, well, that doesn't sound like him. He's always <laughs> such a gentleman. Yeah, normally, I'd agree with you, but... I was quite taken aback. Oh. Who are we talking about? Ask Stephen. Really? Mm. I'm not making excuses, but Sarah did say he'd got an important meeting this morning. Well, yes, that's right, he did have. There'd be some top buyer. Mm, but there was a mix-up, so I heard him rearranging it uh, with six clients, or six fellas, as he called them. So they must be pretty jummy. Oh, dear, that was terrible. But they do say stress goes with the territory, don't they? Mm. And the one thing about Stephen is he likes to win, seal the deal. Yeah, well, that's as may be, but it's like Lord Sugar says. You know, 
Look after your character and your reputation and take care of itself. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it was by a bench. Said I recognised it. Yeah, well, he was there earlier, but it's not like our Stephen to be so absent-minded. Well, Sarah said that he seemed to be a man with a lot on his mind. Maybe suggest to him that instead of a reward, he find a way to give her a bit of support over this new business venture. OK, well, next time I see him, I'll mention it. Great, thanks. See ya. See ya. This, please. Have you seen Uncle Stephen? Gran said he didn't come home last night. Hello, Mum. How are you? Thank you, love. Yes, I could do with living with someone who tidies up, but apart from that... Morning. Uh, morning, Gail. How are you? I'm very well, Michael. Thank you for asking. You see, a little politeness does go a long way. Mom, well, you save the lecture for another time. Look, we, we've got the pitch today and uh, we just wanted to run it by Uncle Stephen. Yeah, we've been over it so many times, you don't know if it's good or bad. Well, I would say try calling him, but as you know, his phone is here. I'd like a word with him myself, so if you do find him, send him my way. Drunk in accident, and then I had a few whiskeys to take care of the pain, and I stayed at a friend's. Well, why didn't you contact us? With what? My phone was here. Is there anything you need now? Well, actually, a charger, because it's, uh, it's totally dead. I promise I won't break curfew again, Mom. <sighs> Doesn't matter how old you are, I will always worry about you. We'll never stop. It's adorable. <laughs> how did you say you hurt yourself? Oh, you know, a slip. Uh, it was nothing. Just a few too many. Oh. Well, we've all been there, sweetheart. It's all fun and games till you find yourself under a motorbike, eh? <laughs> Lots of work emails. Yes. I expect one of them will be from six fellas in Bolton. Why would you say that? You had a call from them last night. I searched for it and that's what came up. Well, uh, why would you search for it? Well, I wouldn't normally pry, but I answered the call to tell whoever it was that you weren't here. It was a very odd conversation. Uh, what did they say? He said you owed him a moped and a phone. Do you know, if I didn't know any better, I'd say you were working as a delivery boy in Bolton. Ah, uh, well, what can I say, Gail? As far back as I can recall, I've wanted to be a delivery boy. And the fact that it's in Bolton, well, I'm living the dream. <laughs> now you've been sarcastic. Well spotted. But if you weren't delivering pizzas, what were you doing? I, I've been looking to invest in one of those businesses, and obviously I've got lots of contacts in Italy, and uh, oh, what's Italy famous for? Birthplace of the pizza. Precisamente. Why were you riding a moped? I wasn't. I was standing outside talking to the owner when one of the drivers crashed into me. And he had the cheek to say it was my fault his scooter got written off. And why did you tell us you'd slipped? Well, I, I just didn't want you to worry. Oh, about what? This accident, he had. Someone crashed into him on a moped. She thought I was on the moped. But it was the other fella on the moped. Look, would you please stop saying moped? What were you talking about? Gail thinks that I've been working as a delivery boy in Bolton. <laughs> Everyone was really on board.
see him weaving his way through the traffic. Box on his back. <laughs> a little helmet on his head. <laughs> <laughs> Very droll. <laughs> Anyway, nothing against the delivery drivers. They're wonderful. But you, being an executive, I mean, come on, what a come down, eh? From captain of industry to pizza delivery boy. Well, listen, a good boss uh, knows his business from top to bottom. You know, if I buy a pizza place, I'll be happy to do a couple of deliveries. Oh, my goodness. Oh, speaking of captains of industry, how'd the pitch go? Uh, well, it started badly. Then it went downhill. Oh, well, I thought you'd knock it out of the park. What happened? Oh, I don't know. They, they asked me a question. I just, I couldn't answer. And then that was it. I just went to pieces. Oh, love. Maybe you just put too much pressure on yourself. Mum, I've got to be able to handle the pressure. I can't even get past the pitching stage. Never mind, get them to cough up. I'm sorry. Oh, I just want to do something new with my life. Oh. Um, can you ride a moped, sweetheart? Uh, oh, no, I really gotta go. Dick Rowe. Pardon? He's the man at Decca Records who rejected the Beatles. Apparently he told Brian Epstein that guitar groups were on the way out. Well, there you go. All the best people get turned down at first. Yeah, if they can't spot a great business opportunity when they see one, well, it's their loss. Yeah. Why don't you help her out? Oh, I, I would love to. I, I, I genuinely... Yeah, I... put your money where your mouth is. Invest in your niece. Come on, what's it you lot say? Get in on the ground floor. Yes, and he does have trouble with the stairs these days, a man of his age. And you're happy to invest in the um, pizza delivery. Give it to Sarah. I would. Of course, I, I would. But you know, my number one rule, never mix business with family. It always, it always ends in tears. Oh. I thought you said it was a great business opportunity. Why would it end in tears? I get it. Come on, don't be mean. I just paid for this cruise. But you loaded. Surely you can find 12 grand. Come on, stop putting him on the spot. Oh, it's Tim. Hi, uh, hi. Can I have a word with you, please, Tim? Uh, yes, yeah, sure. Don't you worry, love. I'll keep working on him. The little da, and I'm assuming he did the same with Elaine. Wolf? Yeah, coercive control, I think they call it. Well, no wonder Tim's so protective of her. And everyone thought his dad was such a lovely guy. So it just goes to show you just never really know someone, do you? I suppose not. Oh! Has he coughed up that 12 grand yet? Mum, don't. It's fine. Oh, come on, Rockefeller. What are you waiting for? It would be a lovely gesture, Stephen. And I'm sure they get it back in spades when the business takes off. I mean, you're good for it, aren't you? Yes, of course I am. Let's do it. Be sure. Positive. I don't know what to say. Thank you so much. Right, I'm going to, um, I'm just going to go tell Michael. Yes! <laughs> oh, he's the best of us, isn't he? Thank you, thank you, Mum. No, you know what I mean, sweetheart. He is so generous. Yes, well, he's got money to burn, hasn't he? Thank you, Stephen. You're welcome. <laughs> I can't believe that you thought he was working as a delivery boy. What about telephone? Nothing gets fancy here. Hmm? I've always wanted one of these. You can't beat the sound of bird song in your garden, can you? You need to get hold of some fat balls. I won't ask. Come on, Mrs. Santa wants his crimbo smacker. Mm. <laughs> Stronger than my usual. Good. You make a nice change. You coming home from work, smell of something different other than bacon fat. OK, and do you hear me complaining when you come home covered in dandruff and split ends? There are hairs in that bed that couldn't have possibly come from either of us. Right, well, at least he got you something. Hey, we're doing your gifts over at dinner. Right, well, whatever. Oh, sorry, I haven't got you anything. I didn't have time. Well, the fact that you're in one piece is good enough gift for your dad. Mm. Listen, do you want um, a hot chocolate with all the trimmings, marshmallows? I'm doing one for Lil. Hey, they come in these little... Little Santa mugs. Go on, you know you wanna. Yeah, all right, go on then. 
Jack Frost sleeping at your nose. <laughs> what have you been doing? Well, I've been wishing Sally the compliments of the season and finding a site for my new bird table. Bird table? Yes, my Christmas present to myself. It's a weird gift. No, it's not. Weird is me mum buying Stephen a roof box. Hang on, he hasn't even got a car. Yeah, well, exactly. <laughs> He's having to fit it on her car. At least we've got a garden to put my bird table in. I just hope he's not too disappointed. Oh. It's the waffle iron. Yeah. So you can have the taste of home here. <laughs> oh, that, that's very, uh, very thoughtful. Thank, thank you. Um, oh, actually, I, I got you two a little something. Oh, I thank you. hope it comes in useful. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's, uh, you're not wrong, it is a little something. David. Well, I mean, we shell out best side of 40 knots, and old Elon Musk here gets us a five quid oh. travel pillow. Well, they're, they're very handy uh, on flights, uh, especially long haul. Oh, really? Well, we'll have to remember that, won't we, when we're jetting off to Sydney? We can try a sandwich it between us heads. <laughs> well, we could take it in turns, I suppose. Hey, Gran, you might as well have it for your cruise. Why would you need a travel pillow on a cruise? Don't be so ungrateful, David. It's the thought that counts. Come on. Well, I hope you put a bit more thought into my birthday present. Oh. Oh, you know they messed up the delivery. Mm. But it'll be here tomorrow. Mm. Uh, oh, excuse me. Oh. Oh, uh, Max. We uh, we had a word with Santa, didn't we? And he cracked the whip with the elves. Mm. Ah. <laughs> An edit, sweet pro. Yeah, the review said it was pretty decent. Decent. Zona, this is <laughs> one of the best <laughs> editing magazines on the market. You, you shouldn't have spent this much. Well, you're worth it, you know? And Lily chipped in as well. She gave up some of her pocket money. Did you really? Do you like it? I love it. Thank you. Oh. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Compliments. Oh, to oh, for goodness sake. Oh. Let me jump. Mm. You know, I had enough of loud bangs. What are you and your little mates up to this Christmas? Anything? Well, what's that supposed to mean? Let's just change the subject, shall we? No, no. Go on, I want to know. Well, I didn't think Christmas would be Griff's thing, with Jesus coming from the Middle East and being Jewish, of course. Well, he's not racist. Uh, who's Griff? He's bad news. Well, the local grand wizard. I mean, all right, he's not running about with a pillowcase on his head, but... He's dreaming of a white Christmas, if you know what I mean. Well, you're just like the rest, aren't you? You know, you call people racist when they ask questions just to shut them down. I'm winding you up. Lee Griff cares about me. More than you do, anyway. Uh, editing sweet pro. Would I shell out on all that money if I didn't care? OK, so throw money at us, then. You know, to make up for everything else. All right, guys, come on, just turn it down. No, again. no, no, it's all right. I'm going to go. Don't know why I bothered coming anyway. <laughs> Max, come on. <sighs> nice one. I'm going to consult us. Yeah. Put a couple of thermals into your suitcase. It's minus two. Where are you going? Thanks, Dad. Minus two here and all. You better put your thermal in. It's a cruise, it's not an expedition. Anyway, our stateroom will be toasty warm, absolutely fabulous. Mm, it's cold on land, though, isn't it? What time are you going to Liverpool? We need to set off at half three. Oh, I bet you're dead excited, aren't you? Not just about the Aurora Borealis. I'm also looking forward to meeting the Sammy people in Tromso. They're meant to be dead interesting. You wait till you meet the Scouse people in Liverpool. They're interesting. <laughs> Sammies are indigenous people, nomads. Have you just swallowed a guidebook? She's right. They heard reindeer. Imagine if I get close to one in Lapland at Christmas time. I'm going to take loads of photos and send them to Hope. It's pine, you know, isn't it? Crikey. You want the brandy? <laughs> it's squash. Can't stand brandy. Stephen got me it for my birthday. Don't you think it's a bit stingy? Well, if you expected him to bring round Rolexes every time, he wouldn't be rich for very long, would he? Yeah, I suppose. Or it could be like a cryptic present. You know, like he's taking me fishing on the Zambezi. It's not the sort of thing I'd have bought you. No. And I'm not having it that he saw that and thought of me. True. 
It's like, I don't know why he's been so tight lately. It's like he bought that travel pillar for me and Shona yesterday, and now this. It's like, come on. What did Stephen buy you for Christmas? Uh, nothing. I spent 50 quid on him. Yeah, he bought David a hip flask for his birthday, but that was from Elaine and he was re-gifting it. That was a bit tight, isn't it? Didn't make sense. I mean, why would someone with loads of money do that? Beats me. Unless Stephen got a phone call from that six fellas place the other week. The guy thought he was talking to Stephen and he was yelling. You owe me a moped and a mobile. Well, Stephen made some excuse, but it sounded like he was in trouble. Oh, I suppose it is a bit weird, isn't it? Someone that rich living with that mum. Something's going on. And I'm going to get to the bottom of it. Right, so kind. <laughs> Here he is. Last of the big spenders. What are you talking about? Let's go inside. Is everything OK? No, it's not. I've just been talking to Gabrielle. I want to know what's going on. There's absolutely nothing to worry about. Stephen, do me the courtesy of telling me the truth. Shall I make us all a brew? I don't want a brew. Stephen. Uh, I wouldn't mind. Did you steal from the company and run up huge debts? Well, it's really not as simple as that. Then explain it to me. Gabrielle's in a terrible state, and I can't believe you do something like this. Well, you know, like I said, it's, it's, it's complicated. Why would Gabrielle lie? May I say something? No! Stephen is being coercively controlled by Gabrielle. Max. How long has this been going on? Well, it's, uh... It's difficult to put an exact, uh... date on things. You're still processing the trauma, aren't you? It's painful to realize that you've been manipulated and abused. <laughs> Everything that Gabrielle said Stephen has done, she has, in fact, done to Stephen. It's textbook victim blaming. Have you been a victim of coercive control, Stephen? Trust me, with my experience, I'm sure of it. Sorry. It's okay. Everything is going to be okay. I'm Sweetheart, can you be quick, please? I want to nip over to Rita's before I go on the cruise. Apparently, she's got a box of milk tray and Cliff at Christmas on the hi fi. <laughs> oh. Right. Well, it's. Uh... It's not so much about Stephen. Oh. It's more that Stephen and I were discussing how much we're going to miss you and Sam being around over the holidays. Oh, really? <laughs> uh, I, I didn't want to say anything uh, in case it upset you. Oh, sweetheart. Oh. oh. Well, you know, no, no matter how old you are, you, you always miss your mum. Yeah. Uh, uh, this is the part where you say, I'll miss you too. Oh, well, I, I will, I will miss you too, honestly. And, you know, I'll be back before you can say, who do Royka, soccer, Dana? What? <laughs> that is Norwegian for have you smoked your socks? <laughs> <laughs> Sora. Hey, hey, you're off. Yes, we're off. Right, so, uh, passport. Check. 
Clean underwear. Check. Fantastic. And don't worry about me too much, sweetheart. <laughs> well, I'll try not to. Oh, go on. <laughs> come on, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Love you. Love you, love. Watch your head. Yes, I'm in and out and in. Belts. See you, love. Suit yourself. I don't like lying to me a moment like that. And you think I'm enjoying it? Listen, there's no point in burdening her. You know, honestly, Gail, I, I think we really can keep this between ourselves. The, the family just doesn't need to know about this, okay? Fine. Look, I'll tell you what, why don't you come to mine? Should we say in like an hour, yeah? Just, I promise it's going to be okay. Okay. Mum! Everything okay? Everything's amazing. Guess what? I've got some news. Oh? I've just quit my job. Quit? Why? Well, me and Michael, well, I, I was going to leave anyway after I secured the funding for the business. But you know what? This way I can, I can dedicate more time, you know, to getting things tied up, ready to go. Don't you think it's a bit hasty? Well, Mum, no. This is what I've always wanted. Make me own decisions. I'm excited. Oh, well, then I'm excited for you, love. Just need to shore up the investment now with Stephen and we're good to go. What? It's not my business, love, but you do need to talk to Stephen. <laughs>